Hey, Hi Tides. You know, the last time I was anchoring, some of you complained that I wasn't enthusiastic enough. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna double it for this episode. Hey, Hi Tides, the first piece is about being clean. We want to protect you against the coronavirus, so what do you actually think that entails? Let's go over how to properly wash our hands. First step is to scrub your hands with soap twice to the tune of happy birthday. Make sure to get under your nails and the back of your hands too. Then rinse off all the soap, making sure to scrub. Once done with that, go ahead and dry your hands, and that's it. How many times a day do you wash your hands? Uh, now with the virus, I do it pretty often. Would you want some hand sanitizer? Of course, please. Thank you. There you go, it's an extra squirt. How many times a day do you wash your hands? I wash my hands every time a task requires me to get dirty. Uh, 12. How many times a day do you wash your hands? 30. <laughs> How many times a day do you wash your hands? Are we talking regularly or now with the corona thing? Both. Regularly, whenever they're dirty? I mean, I don't know. Whenever I have to, you know what? Honestly, it's whenever I shake hands with a student, I have to wash my hands to get the dirt off. Okay. How about with the coronavirus? I don't shake hands with the students anymore, just fist pumps. Would you like some Fair? hand sanitizer? Sure, because you guys are around me. All right, one for your chat. Woo! Look at me. <laughs> Woo! Yeah! Never. Even with people staying clean, things are still getting canceled from the coronavirus. Yeah, they canceled the NBA, colleges, and even the very famous St. Paddy's Day Parade. But Beachville News still has something for you to enjoy St. Paddy's Day. A traditional Irish meal for St. Patrick's Day, made by Chef Gabrielle, Starting off with a compound butter with parsley. Two nice slices of corned beef. And the beautiful greens that we took from the garden along with potato. That should be sauteing all those in one pan. Very simple clean up at the end. Carrots, radishes, and a little salt. She's putting in the collard greens and the cabbage from our school garden. And she'll saute that until they soften up and become bright green. And she'll deglaze the pan with a little grape juice, which makes everything taste better. Sprinkled with parsley. You don't really need another green. Delicious St. Patrick's Lovely. Day dinner. But what are we going to drink with it? I think we could take some of the Swiss chard and the kale. A smoothie made with kale, Swiss chard, 
from this little garden. We'll add some strawberries as well. The next ingredient are strawberries. A little bit of juice, some honey just to sweeten things honey up. For the sweet taste. And Chef Gabrielle makes a delicious, healthy and a liquid -based beverage apple juice. to enjoy with your St. Patrick's Day meal. <laughs> the vegetable garden at Miami Beach Senior High School was provided by Christ Journey Church, the PTSA, Mr. Reese and the Ecology Club, and Slow Food Miami with their grants to keep the vegetables growing. Thanks to all of them. You know, there's a lot more going on than just St. Patty's Day this week, so let's learn about it. March 14, 1879. Albert Einstein was born in Ulm, Germany. His theory of relativity led to new ways of thinking about time, space, matter, and energy. He received the Nobel Prize in 1921 and emigrated to Princeton, New Jersey in the U.S. in 1933, where he was an outspoken critic of Nazi Germany. Believing the Nazis might develop an atomic bomb, he warned President Roosevelt and urged the development of the U.S. atomic bomb. March 14, 1833. The first female dentist. Lucy Hobbs was born in New York State. She received her degree in 1866 from the Ohio College of Dental Surgery and was a woman's right advocate. She received her diploma as the first female in the world to receive a doctorate in dentistry. She became the first woman dentist in the United States to establish a dental practice when she opened in Chicago, Illinois in 1867. March 15, 1767. Andrew Jackson, the seventh U.S. president, was born in a log cabin in Wixhaw, South Carolina. As a boy, he volunteered to serve in the American Revolution. Captured by the British, he refused an order to clean an officer's boots and was slashed by a sword. Jackson later gained fame as a hero during the War of 1812. In politics, he helped form the New Democratic Party and became the first man from an impoverished background to be elected president, serving from 1829 to 1837. March 6, 1475. Renaissance genius Michelangelo was born in Caprice, Italy. He was a painter, sculptor, architect, poet, and visionary, best known for his fresco on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and his sculptures David and the Pieta. Michelangelo was considered to be the greatest living artist in his lifetime, and ever since then he has been held to be one of the greatest artists of all time. A number of his works in painting, sculpture, and architecture rank among the most famous in existence. This year was also a leap year and an election year. It's weird that it happens at the same time. But let's learn a little bit more about the Democratic nominees, because that's what's actually happening in this election year. The United States presidential elections is quite one of the most exciting and dramatized events in US history. We the people are deciding who is going to lead our country for the next four to eight years. And just three weeks ago, we had eight Democratic candidates, but now we're narrowed down to just two candidates. So who are our 2020 U.S. Democratic presidential candidates as of today? Number one, we have Joe Biden. Joe Biden is a former vice president under former President Barack Obama from 2009 to 2017 after nearly serving four decades as senator from Delaware. Biden is the most experienced politician in the race and amongst the oldest at 77 years of age. This will be his third run for U.S. president, and his main goal is restoring America's standing on the global stage, strengthening economic protections for low-income workers in industries like manufacturing and fast food. Our second Democratic candidate is Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders served as a U.S. representative for 16 years before being elected into the Senate in 2006, where he currently represents the state of Vermont. 
The 78-year-old is a progressive and the co-founder of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. He is the longest-serving independent congressman in its history. This is Sanders' second run for the presidency after losing the Democratic race against Hillary Clinton in 2016. His proposals consist of free tuition at public colleges, a $15 minimum hourly wage, and universal health care for all U.S. citizens. And those are our 2020 U.S. Democratic presidential candidates as of today. Although spring break is coming up and it's going to be super fun, there's some things you have to be cautious about. And luckily, we made a segment telling you what those things are. Spring break is just around the corner and it's no surprise that students are already making their plans for the week. Whether it be having a grand time with friends, getting work done, or just plainly getting extra sleep. Although spring break is considered to be a half version of winter break, it contains history that even you may not be aware of. Its origins became fully realized in the mid-30s by Glendon Schwarthow, who was an English professor at Michigan State University. As of putting it as it may sound, Schwarthow actually tagged along with his students and witnessed many festivities that they celebrated, which motivated him to write and publish a book titled, Where the Boys Are. Ever since the book was published, the Spring Break Florida floodgates were officially wide open. However, it's imperative to understand that Spring Break can have negative side effects to many students. Arrests for underage drinking, public intoxication, and fighting are so common during Spring Break that some police departments set up temporary jails on the beach. Students can also become more reckless and begin slacking off when it comes to getting work done. Adults can also create an impact on spring break as well. Due to Miami being a hotspot for tourism, it's no surprise that the beaches and hotels are going to be booked and are going to be even more expensive for the week. The Miami Beach Police Department is also beefing up the number of officers to patrol crowds for the remainder of spring break after several incidents involving alcohol-induced revelers have caused chaos in the city. In another incident that took place in last year's spring break, a woman named Maria Michelle Logan was killed by a hit-and-run driver on her way to the airport, according to the Miami Herald. Logan reportedly yelled, Bye Miami, while hanging out of the car window on the airport expressway before she flew out of the car. Hi tights, it's not a crime to get rest or just party with friends here and there, but it's important to not take life for granted and become reckless. With that said, enjoy your break. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next week. Bye!